Hi friends, making of low frequency power amplifiers or simply a sound amplifier are quite popular among do-it-yourself fans. There are many popular specialized micro circuits of low frequency amplifiers now. And after assembling amplifier based on micro circuits, the radio amateur looks for something more complicated. In spite of a huge variety of microchips, transistor amplifiers haven't lost their actuality. If you need a good, high-quality amplifier, then it is worth assembling it on transistors. Today we will talk about a good transistor amplifier working in Class B. Don't rush to conclusions. Class B is also good. The presented circuit was published in the Journal of Radio in 1991. This is the legendary amplifier of Dorothy Hip, so that it has a fairly old age. The genius of the circuit is simplicity. Despite the minimum number of used components, with an appropriate power source, this amplifier is able to give a power up to 50 watts to the load of 4 ohms. This is very good. At different times, radio amateurs have modified and changed the circuit. You can generate the Gerber file of your PCB and send it to production. The GLC PCB will make them in any quantity and the quality will be at the highest level. The price for the board starts just from $2 for 10 pieces and free delivery is available for the first order. The boards are made in the shortest possible time. The link to GLC PCB website will be found in the description under the video. For convenience, I replaced Russian components with Western analogues. And now we will consider this version. In this amplifier there are used quite interesting circuit solutions. For example, resistor R12, which limits the collector current of the output stage transistors and is a kind of output power limiter, simultaneously protects the output transistors from short circuits at the output, so that it can be said that the amplifier isn't afraid of short. The resistor preferably must have a power of 1 watt, but in extreme case it can be half watts. The coefficient of nonlinear distortion at a frequency of 1 kHz isn't more than 0.1% and at 20 kHz less than 0.2% so that no distortion is heard at nominal power. The amplifier is powered by a bipolar source. The range of supply voltages are from plus minus 15 to plus minus 25. To increase the output power, you can increase the supply voltage, but in this case you need to change the transistors of the end cascade to more powerful ones and recalculate several resistors. Resistors R9 and R10 are selected depending on the supply voltage. They limit the current through Zinger diodes. In this part, a simple parametric stabilizer is assembled, which provides a stable power supply for the chip of the operational amplifier. This is quite good operational amplifier. It is used in audio equipment very often, and you can safely change it to TLO81. In case of replacement by other operational amplifiers, it is worth paying attention to the pinout, since it may be different. I advise you to install the chip of amplifier on the mounting panel for quick replacement in case of something bad happens. By the way, this author also has a second version of this amplifier, completely on transistors. It's now in front of you. A few words about the printed circuit board. I tried to make it as compact as possible and I think it worked out quite well. Link for downloading can be found in the description. There are jumpers on the board, they must be placed and soldered at first. The transistors of the pre-output and output stages are installed on a common heatsink. Of course, we must isolate them for the heatsink. In the output stage, it's worth using transistors with a dissipation power of at least 50 to 60 watts, with a collector emitter voltage of at least 60 volts, or better 80 or 100, but it also depends on the supply voltage. As seen at the circuit in the output and pre-output cascade, complementary pairs of transistors are used. It is very desirable to choose transistors by gain factor. Some multimeters have a function to check this parameter, or you can use a transistor tester. Link to some samples will be found in the description. 
Zinier diodes can be for a half a watt, with a stabilization voltage of 14 to 18 volts. A few words about the power source. In the case of a transformer power supply, it is desirable to use filter capacitor with a capacity of at least 4,700 microfarad in each shoulder. The more, the better. The amplifier works in class B and efficiency is at a fairly high level. But in any case, the power supply must have some margin. I advise you to take a transformer with a power rating of 70 watts. Well, now let's hear how it sounds. I must say that during the tests, a certain background is heard. This is due to the fact that in the power supply I have used capacitors of very low capacitance, only 1000 microfarad in each shoulder. The quality is basically good, at the level of TDA2030-2050 chips. With a good power source in terms of power and quality, it can compete with chips like TDA7294. On this, the video has come to an end. In the description, besides the archive of the project with the circuit and PCB, you will find links to the components for the amplifier assembly, as well as to the ready low frequency amplifier boards for every taste. Please don't forget to rate this video and if there are questions related to electronics, ask them in our official group. The link is also in the description. Now I say goodbye until new meetings with you was Kasyan TV.